Excellent. So it's recorded as well. So you're going to get the recording and the presentations. So I think it's time for us to get started. I think it's a full house. We have uh, tons of people in the room. Okay. So I'm just going to get started. Um, as everyone starts joining in, I'll just admit every individual um, into the presentation as well. So let's get started. So um, the purpose of this presentation is to talk about how are you going to adapt your marketing strategies to COVID-19 and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense right now at this point. My name is Miriam Golubgear and I am the owner of, I'm the chief amazement officer of Digital Marketing Experts. I picked that name because I absolutely hate every single title that's out there and I thought I want something that's a little bit different. I may change it again depending on how I feel about it. Um, I have been in the industry for 17 years and my focus has always been creating uh, a sustainable digital marketing strategy that will require a sharp vision and a lot of metrics. So I'm a big fan of metrics. Yesterday I had a presentation, a, a webinar on um, metrics that are provided by Google and how to analyze the information that's given to us and the stats to the benefits of our local businesses. Um, and today we're gonna to talk about marketing strategies that works. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll send you guys the link to all the presentations I've done uh, in the past week. Uh, so you guys can feel free to take advantage of information that I have. Everything I have is very metric driven and very report based. And you're gonna hear from me throughout this entire presentation how important it is for you guys to have a full uh, control over your own website reports and metrics and your social media metrics and, and kind of understand what you're doing ongoingly based on numbers. Numbers are super important. Okay. Um, here's my contact information. Again, it will be in the email that I will send out to everyone. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, I'm always open to answering questions and, you know, having a tiny bit of a brainstorming sessions with whoever I'm speaking with. Um, not everybody's an expert in everything that we're doing. If I do come across someone who knows something that I don't know, I would like to have them help me out a little bit. And so I would always be there and help you guys if you have any questions or any comments. Let's get started. Um, one of the biggest things that's happening right now is everyone's panicking. Uh, there's tons of information being shared around right now. And a lot of it is either 100% correct and true and some aren't and uh, people don't know what to trust they don't know what information makes sense and what doesn't and one of the biggest full pause that's happening right now is when people try to sell their services or their products online so since people are panicking this is not no time to focus on yourself focus on how you can help others that doesn't mean you need to constantly post information regarding COVID-19 it just means provide information that you wouldn't normally provide because you'd be so busy selling your products and services, but be a thought leader. Provide some, a bit of an information for those who may actually need your help. So if you're a financial institution, you know, you might want to produce some content about how to address um, the crisis with finances and how to, you know, save our money and what we should or should not do as far as our money is concerned. Um, so stay relevant to your audience, but provide a bit more information and less focus on your products and services. Um, this is a really good time to work on your back burner projects. I know for a fact that we've been trying to create more videos and uh, set up a podcast. We haven't been able to do it because we're just busy all the time. And this is a really good time. One of our clients, um, we had a conversation with uh, yesterday and, sorry, I just want to make sure this is on. There we go. We had a conversation with yesterday and he said, um, what should I do? I have a landscaping company. And I said, well, would it hurt you to write a little ebook about how to do certain landscaping work on your own uh, for the time being? And he loved the idea. He was actually thinking about doing something similar to that. So when I brought up the topic, he had so many uh, better solutions and ideas that he wanted to add into his book. So if you have any suggestions for yourself or, you know, for someone that you know that can help them come up with a project for the time being that would help them out, uh, feel free to share with, you know, others and kind of create a bit of a um, 
something that's a little bit different that we're used to do. Um, this is actually a really good time to con kind of cons think about rebranding your, um, I mean, if you have a, um, a brand, but you don't know what messaging you've been trying to send out. And maybe at this point, you need to consider changing that. Maybe this is a good time to start thinking about plans and how to, um, you know, update your brand messaging and what would it actually work for you? Because if you think about it, behaviors are changing. Now, we need to focus online. I mean, think about it. The conferences are getting canceled. Meetings are getting canceled. People are not walking into brick and mortar stores. So maybe it's time to kind of consider um, putting together a PR strategy that helps you uh, promote yourself online. So I've been doing uh, tons of webinars. This is our seventh one. This particular one is focusing on marketing, but uh, this is a really good timing to get your message out there. Um, just because you've been so busy, there we go. Just because you've been so busy, you know, creating your empire and, and building your brand over the past, you know, X amount of years that you've been in the business, doesn't mean that things have to stay the same. And, and this is a time to consider a little bit of a change. So create webinars um, or if you, so one of the things that we, we noticed is a lot of uh, um, workout studios or gyms are setting up online sessions where you can connect via Zoom and do your workout. So if this is something that works for you or if you're in that business, consider that. Videos, this is a really good time for videos. If you have any products or services um, that you've been thinking of building a video around it, it's a really good idea to consider that right now. It's gonna be really hard getting professional videographers to come to you, um, but there's ways around that and there's tons of good, amazing videographers in, in, in York region that you can take full advantage of and they're full of incredible ideas and suggestions. So this is a really good one. Um, there are strategies that I wanna to talk to you guys about that you can use to boost your online sales. Now, there's a bit of a, um, a timing on some of these strategies and I'm gonna share them with you right now. So these are some of the strategies, the 20 strategies that I think um, would help you, whether it's during COVID-19 or as just like on a general term that it would help you grow your business online. Um, but you got to kind of be careful with the timing of some of them, mainly because, uh, so I'm just going to go over a few of them with you, see if this uh, works for you or not. The reason I keep pausing is because there's more people coming online and I'm trying to admit all of them in. Uh, using remarketing to close, uh, using remarketing is a fantastic tool. Remarketing, it means, have you guys seen those tiny little ads or like the bigger ads, banner ads that kind of follow you everywhere after you've made a purchase of some sort? They're called remarketing. Or um, you're on Facebook and you find a page and you click on their website and immediately you see it on their Insta your Instagram uh, account as well. Remarketing is a fantastic tool because it kind of follows the client till there is a conversion. A conversion means someone has made an action. They've either come in and bought something or they filled up a form or they downloaded something. So conversion is important. Remember that. So setting up remarketing is very important. Uh, talking to your prospects on social media is super important. It doesn't matter when and where it is what's happening at that time, if there is a pandemic or not, always have to be talking to your prospects online. Um, that's why tools like Facebook chat or Instagram direct message or even chatbots are great tools to consider. You want to pinpoint your best attribution, attributions and conversion paths. You do want to have, use the, you know, the voice of the customer to create a, to, for more of a resonant ad campaign. All of that is important, but as I said, go over the list, see what makes sense for you right now. We're, we're suggesting to some of our clients, depending on the industry they're in, for them to pause their ads. Therefore, creating a Gmail ad will not work for them at this point. However, Gmail ads are very um, successful and they work very well. So consider that as well. So I put all these um, strategies in here for you feel free to go through all of them. Um, some of them may apply to you if 
you do have an email campaign. Some people don't like to send out email campaigns. Some applies if you are running ads. Uh, some may or may not like to run ads right now uh, or may not even be a, a feasible idea for them to run ads right now. So go over them, make sure this applies to you and if it works for you at this point. But overall, keep this list and put it included into your marketing plan uh, for your online sales. Now, every single one of us that are, that are running our business, we have 20% of our customers contributing 80% of our revenues. It's a known fact. So uh, creating um, a prioritized schedule to put them ahead of others makes sense at this point. However, that doesn't mean don't pay attention to all of your other clients. It just means at this point, this, um, you want to create as much uh, profitability as possible for yourself. We One of the apps that uh, I highly recommend is Indier, and it's a customer relationship management system, and it's a really cool tool. What I've done is I've linked it into this presentation, so once you see the presentation, feel free to click on it, and it will take you onto the, um, the complete uh, app, and you can use it. It's available online on desktop um, and Android and OS, so you can use it from any device that you have. You do want to change your marketing message a little bit. Uh, we got to be a little bit more sensitive with uh, the, the, the message that we send out and the context of that message. Um, putting pause on campaigns that are very sales driven and very sales strong is actually highly recommended right now. You want to make sure that if you can change the language of your ads to make it that you're there to provide help and support to local individuals or help and support to people that are around us. Um, that's a really good idea. Consider that um, if you're running ads, if you are not running ads and you're only posting on social media, be a little sensitive with what people are going through. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of companies right now that are um, showing the, the more of like the community side of what they're doing and their volunteer piece and how they're helping the community rather than, you know, trying to sell their services. So if you are in that position, it's a great idea to take advantage of that. Um, if you do have a brick and mortar store or you have, and, and you had to shut down, or if you have a certain product that you can sell, this is a really good timing for you to offer free shipping uh, or local pickup. Um, so curbside pickup is an option that's being offered right now. This is a, a very popular option in US right now. Um, but free shipping where it comes to your door is a, it's not a bad idea either. Um, I know with Amazon, they have changed their prime, um, shipping option a little bit. Um, so it's not that it's completely available the next day, um, which is great. I'm so happy that they're actually thinking about the people that work for them. Um, but no one's expect to get something tomorrow. And it's understandable that things have been changed and strategies need to be put in place to help local businesses as well. So if you can offer free shipping, that's fantastic. If you want to offer local pickup, that's again, um, something that you should consider. One other thing is that um, if you're going to offer free shipping, um, if you have an online business, look at the price point that you have for your products and services before and after you're about to offer the free shipping. Um, it's just, everybody's pricing is different and the strategy is different. It's just, I just wanna make sure that you are fully aware of your pricing before you offer free shipping. So extending your return on exchange policy is a very important and sensitive issue right now. Uh, I bought something at Shoppers yesterday and I was told that I can't exchange or return if the product doesn't work till July, which is totally understandable. Um, and I mean, if you think about it, you don't want to put that person that works there at risk. Um, for me going back again, you never know what's going to happen. What if I have, this, what, I, what if I contract a disease and go back and try to talk to this person? So I get it. Um, and I was perfectly fine with it. Um, that actually applies to online purchases as well. So extend your return and exchange policy, make a note of it, post it on your social media, talk about if you do provide the service, talk about it and, 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 and make a big deal about it so that they know that this option is available. 
for your business as well. Now you do want to revisit your paid marketing strategies, mainly because at this point you kind of don't want to um, diminish the cash flow that you have going on for yourself. But at the same time, you don't want to kind of disappear 100% off of the face of the planet because this is happening. You want to have a little bit of um, exposure, but then you want to also be wise about it. How is this going to affect your cash flow? What's going to happen with your ads? Is this a good idea at the moment or not? Um, am I going to get some sort of a return on this ad? Because it's not all about awareness and exposure because not all of us are big corporations that can afford spending dollars for just exposure. So we need to have a plan. So, I mean, one of the biggest things is that it's important for you to sit down right now and actually put together a plan because once everything cools off and we're back to, you know, our regular day, nine, nine to five days or regular work hours, uh, we do need to change the way we were doing things and there should be a new marketing strategies that you put in place. So maybe add in, how am I going to, um, how am I going to take care of my paid marketing right now into your long-term plan? Because it's going to be a while before we can figure out how everything is going to change or not. And take a look at the advertising platforms that you're using. Um, does it make sense for you to have an ad going on Facebook or on AdWords? And there's some, uh, th there's certain platforms that are actually offering credit. So uh, Google is offering a $75 credit to certain, up into, if you spend certain amount of dollars on ads, and even though you have received those coupons in the past of the $50 to $75 credits, that's fine. They'll send you another one upon request. So if that's an option, maybe consider being on AdWords and not necessarily on Facebook. It all depends on where your target audience are as well. So if you're, most of your clients are from Facebook, it won't make sense for you to be on AdWords. Obviously you should be on Facebook. So consider that as well. So when I talk about paid advertising, these are the platforms I'm talking about. Google ads, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. I know we stopped most of our ads for our clients on LinkedIn, except for one of our main clients. And that's just because they're a regulatory um, organization and they talk about a lot of, they provide a lot of information and they did want to have an awareness campaign. So we kept them. Uh, Google remarketing, Facebook remarketing, Twitter, Facebook ads, Google search marketing, YouTube and Bing. So Yahoo and Bing are together. So whatever you do for one, you do for the other. YouTube, um, Google Ads, and Google Remarketing are also combined into one platform. So um, if you are creating videos and you want to have a tiny campaign going for your video ads, that's actually not a bad idea because video ads are only costing you a penny per view. So consider that as well. Now, you do want to think of retargeting ads to reach your customers. Now, this may or may not work for you at this point, but I'm going to tell you about it because after post COVID-19, you need to have a plan. And in order for that plan to work, you need to know what's out there and what works and what doesn't. Oh, Raj says, any suggestions on a market product for Easter and Mother's Day? Oh, that's a good, that's a really good question. We know things have changed and it won't be like a regular celebratory there. AdWords the best. That's a really good question. Um, actually, just a quick thing, Raj. Um, I did a presentation yesterday, which I will put up as well, and I will send it to you guys. Um, the gift in floral ad search, sorry, uh, search and advertising has gone up over COVID-19. I can't remember the exact percentage, but it has gone up. I think it was 15%. I'll put that information out there for you to see. So that being said, AdWords is a fantastic uh, tool to use for it. And if you like, um, we can talk about it a little bit further outside. But yes, definitely run an ad campaign around your um, for Easter and Mother's Day because people are still sending flowers. Um, they are still sending gifts and gift baskets. Uh, it may take a little bit longer. You have to come up with a strategy around when you're going to send it um, or when you should advertise to send it because it's going to take a bit of time to get to people depending on the shipping company that you work with. Um, so think about that piece, but yes, definitely use your AdWords um, and definitely use display ads 
or video ads rather than just search, search text ads. I hope that answered your question. Okay. Uh, retargeting. So I'm going to, let's go back to what I was about to say. So it's super important. I'm going to give you all the information that you need to know post COVID-19. And that's because I want to make sure when everything is done and ready for you to go back to work, you're going fully armed with information that you need to get the show on the road and be incredible and back to normal, just the way everything is. Okay, so you using retargeting ads is very important. So this is a really good time to start creating, you know, a custom audience. What does that mean? Everybody has a list of clients. We all do, whether it's on social media, whether it's a client that we bought from, whether it's um, we went to a show and they filled up a form and they told us we can connect with them. We have a list. So create that list into an Excel sheet. And if you are advertising on social media and on AdWords, which is Google, you can upload that list as potential clients for you to remarket to. So on social media, which will, let's, let's use Facebook as an example, you can upload the list into the custom, uh, create a custom audience. So here there's a section that says custom customer file, and you can actually click on it and upload your file. Same thing with AdWords. You can go into AdWords and there's a section that says um, upload clients and you can go right ahead and upload your client list. Why do you want to do this? Because these guys at one point have worked with you or bought from you or attended the show that you were at and showed interest. They stopped, they talked to you, they bought something. So it's good to let them know that you're back in business. Things are good. If you're sending out email blasts or if you're you know, setting up a, an, an ad, it's a great opportunity for you to advertise yourself all over again to everybody. Now, you also want to show up intentional as, as, as part of the Google smart shopping campaign. Some of you have products that you sell. They have a brick and mortar store. You've got to get back into the loop of, you know, advertising your products or services again. So uh, Google smart shop campaigns are fantastic tools for them. If you have an e-commerce set up already, this only applies if you have an e-commerce set up. Uh, where they can purchase the product. What you can do is you can set up an ad that looks like this. Okay. This is what it would look like. So if you're selling it, um, you can see the ad via search. So if you look at the one on the uh, far left, that's the sponsored shopping, shopping unit. So if someone's looking for leather jacket, you can set it up that they can actually see the product. So when they click on it, it comes to their website. The one in the middle is a display network. So let's say if someone's reading something on everyday quote, they'll see the ad on the corner and they can click on it. And these are your products that brings them back to your shopping cart. The one in the middle is the YouTube one. So if someone's watching a video on latest spring outfit dresses, they can see the bag that you have for sale. And the one on the far right is the Gmail one. So you're, once you're reading an email on Gmail through your phone, uh, and let's say we name your company Hudson Bay and your products that you have for sale is all available as well. So consider this, this is a very powerful tool. I'm going to go back on this and show it to you. You can sync your product with, um, your, to, to show up on YouTube, Google search and Gmail. Um, they're very easy to set up and this should be one of your plans. If you have an e-commerce platform. Now you do want to optimize your website. This is a really good timing. There's not much going on. Um, a lot of us are sitting at home, uh, not being able to go anywhere or do anything. So instead of Netflix, watching Netflix or, you know, doing things that you should, you could normally do. It's a really good time to clean up your website and come up or, or your blog and come up with a way to optimize it. So what I've done is I have put together, a small list. This is just seven of the top things that I would recommend for you to do to um, optimize your website. There are tons of free tools out there uh, that allows you to kind of measure and see what you've done right or wrong. And uh, yes, it sounds like it's really complicated, but it really isn't. Once you get into it, you realize if Miriam can figure it out, I can figure it out. It's not that hard at all. So a few things that you want to do, you want to make sure that the crawl accessibility um, 
of search engine can see your uh, website. So that means you want to make sure Google and all the other search engines, that Yahoo and Bing can hit your website and they can read your website. That means you have to have a website that is um, of, a, of a current language, WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, um, Joomla, these are all great languages that you can use to write your website or create a website through. Um, some of them, uh, like Shopify, sorry, I forgot to mention Shopify. Shopify has a very strong uh, optimization engine on the back end of all of their websites. So it's a really good tool to consider. WordPress has a lot of, uh, it gives you a lot of ability to put in your own little codes uh, and, and plugins to your website. So again, another very powerful tool. Uh, we build websites that are Shopify, and we tell people it's a great idea. We build WordPress websites, we build Joomla websites, because they're all very easily optimized. So number one, you want to make sure that the search engines can read your website. Number two, you want to have compelling content that, that uh, answers the search's queries. What does that mean? It means if you sell... Um, I apologize. I hear my son running around. So the chances of him coming into the room is really high. I highly, I apologize. He's going to come in and he's loud just in advance. Um, okay. So compelling content. What does that mean? If you own a yoga studio and you teach yoga, um, let's use, you know, uh, hot yoga. You want your website's content to reflect on the fact that you provide hot yoga. So if Miriam from Aurora searches hot yoga in Aurora, your website will be the first one that pops up. Okay. So that means you have to make sure that you have the right keywords sprinkled pro appropriately all throughout your website. Okay. That explains what it's sort of the services you offer. Why do I need a hot yoga? What sets you apart from other people? What makes you amazing? Okay. That's very important. So make sure that you have good content that others are searching for. You want keywords that are optimized to attract the right group of people. That means you want to make sure that you have the word hot yoga in Aurora or hot yoga classes for moms or hot yoga classes for seniors. Whatever service you offer and you know that's how people want you that's how you want people to search for you, that would make sense to put those keywords throughout your website you want an amazing user experience. You want it to be fast because if your website doesn't load fast, I'm not staying on your website. We recently started working with this um, spa, medical spa. And um, they're like, well, nobody goes on our website from their mobile device. We looked it up. It took four and a half seconds for their page, the first page to load. It sounds little, but it really isn't. In the world of online marketing and, and digital marketing, that's really slow. It has to be 0 0.01 second for a site to load. That's how that's how people will stay on your website because we live in a world now that everything has to be fast. If the internet's not fast, we're upset. If our phone doesn't load the site, we're upset. So you want to make sure that the site loads fast. Secondly, you want to make sure that it's easy to access that site. You don't want people to come onto your website and if they're looking for hot yoga, they have to go to the hamburger piece, click on it, find the page that they're looking for, go to the second page, the bottom corner on the left, open another button to see that. That's not user friendly. If you want to sell a product and it's your uh, money maker, you want to put it on the home page. You want to put it on the top so people can see it and, re and for it to resonate with them and for them to want to work with you. You want to have contact us page and telephone numbers all throughout your website so that at any point, if I decide that I'm scrolling up and down and I, and I keep doing the scroll up and down because most of us use our phone, if I'm scrolling up and down, I should be able to call you immediately. You want to have call rail set up where if I click on it, right away I can make a call and connect with you or fill up the form and send to you and that form immediately becomes a, a connection where you get a text message and you call the person right away and sign them up. Sounds a lot, but it really isn't. It's all about making sure this person stays as long as possible on your site and completes the action. You want share worthy information and that would earn that would earn your content to become a link on someone else. I mean, if you think about it, you're not if you probably read like five or six different blogs on a daily basis, but you only may share one of them because you think the content is so compelling and so important that it's worth sharing it. So think about that. 
when it comes to you, what sort of information are you putting out there that is so good that I'm going to be like, I'm going to share this information with my friends and family. That's very important. So make sure that you have good content that I'm willing to share because more people share your links and information, more other people are going to know who you are and they're going to want to connect with you. Every section of your site, whether it's a page or a, oh, sorry, it's a, it's a com content page, or if it's a blog that's written, it should have a proper title. It, the URL should have the name of that content in it, and it should have a proper description. Why? Because we want people to click on it. It's, got, it's called high CTR rate, which means high click through rate. We want them to click and find you and come and talk to you. Snippet schema markups to stand out on search engine um, page ranking, that's important as well. Um, but that's a little technical. If you'd like, we can sit down uh, or we can have like a quick call afterwards. Won't cost you anything, just talk to me and I will explain everything to you. So, so far we're good. Anybody has any questions? Mm, amazing. Can I mute everybody? No. Okay, good. Give me a quick second. I just want to make sure I didn't mute everybody. Okay, so this is another thing that it, this works right now and it will work long term as well. You should put together a pre order strategy if you have a product, set of products that you sell online or on the store level. Why? Because uh, if you think about it, a lot of the local restaurants right now or retailers where they allow you to do, you know, pre-order your food and then you go pick it up. Having that set up in a, in a long term is actually a really good idea on products as well, mainly because you kind of, they, they paid for it. And even if it's not in stock right now, it's, it's done, the, the transaction is done and the product's already paid for and they can come pick it up uh, once it's ready. But why is this important? Because we want to make sure that, um, the client's always coming back, right? That's what we want. We want the client to come back and we want the client to be, um, to not go to our competitors. So having offered something that most of our competitors are probably not offering it right now, it's something that will set us apart and they'll, they'll want to come back. And um, perfect example would be Grocery Gateway. Grocery Gateway right now allows you to pre-order all of your food for the next week or so. Um, so you can have a scheduled payment, like, so you can have scheduled pickup. So you can have a pickup this week and then pre-order your food for the next week or the week after, and then go pick it up. Um, this makes one thing off, takes one thing off my plate right now. I don't have to worry about ordering my food. So restaurants, um, it's a really good idea to consider, um, uh, local retailers, a really good idea to consider this, to cre create a pre-order strategy for their business. Gift cards. There's tons of local businesses right now that are going to hurt uh, in the next couple of weeks to a month or probably a couple of months because um, you can't go to them. You can't go inside an indoor playground and I'm plugging in local businesses that um, are closed right now because you just can't go into, you know, urban park playland or STEM mines or um, you can or places that you go walk in. Uh, what's the other one? Air, air zone, air, air, why can I remember the, the bouncy place where you go and jump? Can't remember the name of it. They're amazing places. They're uh, right beside Bulk Barn's head office. Amazing places. We can't go into them right now. But what would help is if they had gift cards where we can, you know, purchase that gift card for future when we can either take our friends or hand give it give it as a gift to our friends and family. So gift cards are a really good idea right now. Consider them if you have a business that requires people to come in, but they can't come in right now. Um, and it actually helps on a community level for all of us to buy gift cards for others, for them to be able to survive on the long-term basis. Um, there's so this is a little bit of a controversial one. It's called discounting your underperforming stock. Um, it sounds horrible, but it really isn't because a lot of the retailers right now, they're sitting on products and there's nothing they can do with it. But if you discount them, um, it's actually a, a marketing strategy that's been around for, it's a sales strategy that's been around for centuries. 
what you do is you discount on underperforming stocks in, in hard times or during holiday seasons when people are not actually buying anything and they get to um, and, and people would purchase it because it's so much cheaper now than before. Is it, does this fall under the sensitivity um, and being careful with what we sell? No, but um, it's a strategy that you can apply, maybe not at this exact moment. However, uh, when things are back to normal, we can you know, discount the underperforming stocks for them. Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple of things. Um, these are strategies that are post COVID-19. And, and this is based on the fact that uh, there's a lot of new things that came into place in 2020. It's just none of us got to talk about it because we got COVID-19 and disinformation just sat around. And I thought it's a gr really good idea to share it with you guys. Um, and these are the digital marketing trends of 2020. Uh, and kind of prepare you for once you go back and things are back to normal, how to use these for your marketing. So uh, social for products research means that um, uh, social media is dramatically beating uh, search engines and everybody knows this. So product research is becoming more and more um, important from the social aspect of it rather than the actual product that's being, you know, uh, presented on, on search engines. Every single one of us will buy something off of social media in a heartbeat uh, that, that is recommended through social media in a heartbeat um, because someone we know is recommending it. That being said, having um, presenting your products through social media first, is very important. So consider that once things goes back to normal, to have a, a marketing plan to kind of promote your products um, on a social media level before you launch it. You build a community around your products. You, um, once people start using the product, they can write the reviews that they want on social media and then it will spread and you want that. Visual searches have gone up uh, by 50% and that means images um, and videos. So if you have products that can be used through Pinterest lens or uh, Google assistant, and you can, you know, consider them, consider both platforms, Pinterest, if you have products that are visual um, and Google assistant to kind of be like, I want to showcase this product so people can understand what it is and, and, and they can use my serve and they can use it in the future. Um, consider that has had a growth and it will help your business grow as well. There are three things that came out last year, but they're, are growing phenomenally, especially right now, um, is voice control, messaging app, and chatbots. So chatbots and messaging apps have been around, so has voice control, but um, they have taken it to the next level. So um, if I say, Alexa, buy me, she went off. Um, if I say, Alexa, buy me so-and-so item um, off of my Amazon account, it can actually complete the transaction for me. Uh, same with Google Home. So consider that and, and, and kind of figure, there's a way to include your product. It, once your product is optimized enough that you know, search engines can find your products, your product can be a part of the voice control um, phenomenal as well. And people can buy your products through, social, through um, voice recognition as well. So consider that and make sure that your website is optimized. And again, all of this is, ac is accessible to you and you can see what you're doing makes sense or not by looking at your analytics, making sure your analytics is up to date, making sure your website reports, your social media reports are up to date and you're looking at them to kind of uh, troubleshoot where you are and what's working and what's not working. Messaging apps are pretty big. WhatsApp, uh, Facebook messaging app, um, and uh, Instagram are pretty big. So as we chat, we just had a client who um, was asking us if we can advertise on their behalf on WeChat, and we just found out that you can't. You have to be a Chinese-based business from China in order for you to be advertised. However, you can use a third party to advertise on WeChat. Um, but WeChat's a very powerful tool as well as WhatsApp. But thankfully with WhatsApp, you can advertise. I actually like that. I like the fact that it's a little bit more um, of a personal and you can't 
you know, you won't constantly see ads running through it. Uh, Snapchat is another one that has a messaging app and you can use that for advertising as well. Chatbots are very, very powerful. Uh, we have seen it on a bunch of our clients, about on three of our clients, we've seen three different patterns of chatbots. One, the chatbot has a complete conversation with the client and it takes the client to the point of purchase till a rep gets online and completes it. Two, chatbots there to uh, provide the clients with all sorts of customer service and troubleshoot during um, a crisis that they're facing, whether it's their computer not working or a product that they bought has defects and they want to fix it. And third, it's chatbots that have no that the that the owner has no control over it. They just constantly repeat the same thing in a loop. And you can see how much of a how much damage it can cause to a business when a chatbot doesn't work, sits on your homepage, after three seconds it comes off, asks random questions. There's no one on the other end to communicate with people. But then you look at the other two where there's individuals at the end. So there's like, let's say by step five, a person gets involved and continues the conversation and how successful that is for a business. So consider a chatbot, but before you do that, wh whichever company you're going to be working with, sit down, come up with a series of questions uh, um, and, and variables whether if this works or doesn't work, or if they're happy or not happy, what should we say? And, and make sure that the chatbot has at some point someone attached to the conversation. So whether it's a, a text message that's sent to you and notifying you that you need to get on the tool, or it goes into your Facebook messenger or it goes to any sort of a messenger, make sure that it can be attached to you at some point where you can have that conversation with the person. Um, videos, it's called social video saturation and evaluation. Yes, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of videos that are being published every day. My tiny seven year old has made about 20 of them just in the past six days, which we're fine with it because it keeps them occupied and it's not moving, which is great. However, um, when you create videos, make sure they're, uh, they're, they're, Compelling, make sure that they work for your business, make sure they represent your brand and who you are. They don't have to be professionally created. We highly recommend that they are. If they're not, it's fine. It's not in the world, but they need to represent you as who you are. They don't have to be a selling video. They should be a compelling video. 56% of internet users watch videos on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube is missing here. 81% of 55 to 64 year olds are watching videos online each month. And one in three social video viewers watch videos made by a brand every month. So keep that uh, stat. This stat is good because if you are targeting anybody in that sphere, this would apply to you. However, make sure if you're creating a video, it's not video upon video upon video of content that no one's interested in. Make sure that it's appealing. If you want to be funny, go ahead and be funny. If you want to be, um, be careful with the humor because not everybody has the same exact um, you know, view of your humor. Make sure that the content that you're creating um, is not selling or doesn't have a negative connotation in it before you create it. Social e-commerce is growing uh, tremendously, especially during COVID-19. Uh, this is when people sell their products and services through Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Shopify has an incredible tool that allows you to sell, um, that connects your website to Pinterest. And it also connects your website to Amazon. Um, but Amazon is not considered a social site. I just wanted to mention that. Um, Pinterest selling is very popular, especially right now. Etsy is creating, um, a plugin that can be added into your Pinterest as well. So keep that in mind. So Instagram allows uh, you to sell. You have to have a certain amount of number of uh, followership in order for you to be able to sell on Instagram. However, there are tools, tools like Curator that allows, that helps you sell your products on Instagram. Um, feel free to look them up. If you like, send me a quick message and I will share all the sites that helps you sell um, through Instagram. Facebook is another tool that allows you to use social e-commerce as well. Now, 
All of that is great, but you want to make sure that your target audience is ready to purchase the products that you're trying to sell on social media as well. So before you make any sort of a leap into I'm going to sell on social, make sure that you have an audience waiting to buy your products from you. Uh, passive networking is an online consumer spend one third of their time on social media. But so we're seeing a new behavior emerging and that is people are sharing less personal information on major networks and they're watching videos and killing time and sharing things to connect with their friends. So the reason I put that in there is because I want you to think about it. I want you to read it, read it a couple times and think about it. What is consistent in all of this? videos sharing okay so this goes back to what i said make sure you have compelling videos and make sure that you that that your your video is compelling enough that someone will want to share it so consider that and make sure that you also not overdoing it one of the worst traits of a business is when they have so much so we have a client who has so many videos and none of them are uh, and they share it on social media on a weekly basis, but we constantly have to tell them that this, this video doesn't make sense for this exact moment right now. But in his world, everything has to, um, everything that's happened in his business has to come out because he sees it working for the reality uh, world. So therefore he thinks it will work for his business. That's not what works for everybody's business. So before you create a video, it makes sense to kind of sit down with a couple of your existing customers and be like, if I create a video, what makes sense right now? What should I do? What should I put in my video? What do you want to see? What would make you feel like I am a great mortgage broker or a real estate agent, or I have an amazing store and you want to want to come to me and let your clients tell you what works for them and use that messaging to create your videos. Um, social commerce makes a new push and that is very, and that's a very big thing because you can see with a lot of the major retailers, they're using Instagram, um, and they're using, um, video content to push their existing, um, sorry, any tips on increasing number of followers on social media, Instagram. I noticed you didn't mention Twitter on any of the tools. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, okay. So. Raj had a really good question. He said, any tips to increase number of followers on social media, Facebook, Instagram? I noticed you didn't mention Twitter. Um, not a good tool for marketing. No, Twitter is a fantastic tool for marketing. Um, I personally didn't mention it because it's just, it's one of the tools that's out there, but I, I'm she. I'm sorry, Raj. I am very sorry. She, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Um, she has a really good question and I'm going to address it. Um, there are tons of really good ways to increase your followership on social media, good content and uh, connecting with whoever is connecting with you on a direct message where it's a conversation piece that you are having with them is a really good tool to sustain them and keep them. When you have good content and people read your content, people will follow you. Um, don't buy your any, do not buy any followership. Do not spend money on advertising to purchase any followership. However, um, setting up, if you have a Facebook page and all of your clients will make, will be on Facebook, I do recommend running a Facebook ad to increase your, if you don't have any followership on Facebook, to increase the number of followers that you have on Facebook to begin with. And the same could apply to your Instagram. Um, and uh, the reason, so it, it, it makes, so buy your first ads. However, if you see ads that says buy 5,000 Facebook followers, don't follow that. That's a scam. Those are bots. They're not real people and it won't work for you. Good content is the only way to get more followers because they find you appealing enough that they want to read what you say and they share your content, therefore others can see what you have to say and they'll follow you. I like Twitter. Uh, when we help company, when we help um, individuals that are running for office, I mainly use Twitter. Twitter is a fantastic tool when it comes to politics and entertainment and uh, getting a message out there. However, 
Twitter doesn't work for certain businesses. If you are a service company that provides um, mortgages or real estate agent or your real estate agent, Twitter is not the tool for you if you don't have the followership. No one goes on Twitter to look for a house for sale, or no one goes on Twitter to look for um, uh, or, or to find a, a mortgage broker. Twitter is a great tool to read short snippet messages or watch videos on it or, or read um, what certain uh, entertainers have to say or politicians. However, when it comes to um, creating a community of people that are going to uh, refer business ongoingly to you, I personally have had a very, very a, a much more success for our clients using Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Those are the ones that we use. I hope that answered your question. Uh, Patty said, Facebook paid ads for my plumbing company. Why does it tell me I will reach thousands of viewers with my dollars? Then at the end, I have not at all. Patty, that's a very good question. Okay, so Facebook ads, uh, first of all, before you run any sort of an ad, you have to find out if people that are interested in looking for a plumber are, are actually on Facebook or not. That's number one. And my answer to that would be, yes, they are on uh, Facebook. However, the response and the, and the conversion that you will get from um, ads from Google versus Facebook will be phenomenally better. And I'll tell you why, because with Facebook ads, we can't confirm, I mean, sorry, we can't track, we can track conversion, we can track if they have become a, a, a client, but conversion rates are much lower on Facebook than they are on AdWords. So that being said, um, Facebook always tells you, you can reach thousands of viewers, okay? But you can, it doesn't mean you will. And you can't measure it as well as you want to measure it. Whereas if you had a, an ad running on uh, Google map for your pl plumbing business, the chances of you getting calls where you can track them are far higher and far better than Facebook. So does it make sense? Yes. Uh, I do Google PPC now. So this is a better deal maps. Absolutely. Especially because plumbing is something that nobody goes on Facebook to look for a plumber. They'll go on Facebook to ask, do you know a good plumber? And if you have a good rep a reputation, a good amount of people that are following you and know you as a person, they'll recommend you. However, at the end of the day, the first thing we all do is pick up the phone and look up Google, look inside Google to see if we know someone who can do it. Now for your cost per click, your PPC Google ads, um, I hope you're doing, um, an ad that allows you to convert from call the, into calls rather than pay for clicks. So keep that in mind. You can always pay for, uh, conversions rather than clicks. I want to see if I have everybody on mute. I want to unmute people and mute all. There we go. Okay. Realized that, uh, it hadn't been so if anybody has question, I unmuted everybody. Okay. Feel free to ask the question. Are you in need of contacts right immediately? Okay. Okay. So yes. let's move. Um, well, typically we're finding with the, the deliveries are, are you often getting out in oh. two to three Should business I days. I think I'm going to unmute everyone again. Do you have any questions? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Yeah. Too much background talking. Yeah, I'm going to do that. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I apologize profusely. Hold on, I'm unmute all. Trying to figure out why. Are um, I think somebody just dropped the ball. No, again. mute all. I Sorry. I thought I'm having a problem today. There we go. All right, let's move on to this. Um, virtual reality and augmented reality. These are both um, incredible tools. Um, virtual reality is been around for about, I want to say three years, but in the past uh, two years, about 19 months or so, it's growing tremendously. Um, one of the things Porsche did at the last auto show in uh, Vegas was that they uh, gave, if you went to the Porsche um, booth, they gave everybody and um, a, a, a virtual reality goggles. So you would put the goggles on, sit inside the Porsche, 
and and they will simulate the, the driving experience. So you would see how it feels to drive that car as you're going through the mountains and the roads and so forth. Um, VR is an incredible um, tool. The good thing about VR is that because it's so new, it would set you apart from others. So definitely consider it if you can. Um, and I also am a big fan of augmented reality. I have created, so I worked with Snapped at one point and we had these augmented reality videos set up on our uh, print ad. So you would click on, when you see our print ad, you would use your phone and you could see um, a video of me popping up and talking about uh, the services I offer. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, right now, QQ and WeChat and Snapchat, same with Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. Uh, they're all in the process of boosting their augmented reality um, with it right after everything, when everything calms down, I would highly recommend looking into it and see if there's ways that you can incorporate it into, if you are, uh, if you do any sort of a real estate or if you're a videographer or real or, or a photographer, um, augmented reality will work very well for your business as well. So definitely consider this. This is a, and it's going to pick up and it's going to be massive. It's already big in most of Europe and most of Asia, so it's working its way here, consider it. Um, now, this is important. There, beside Google and AdWords, thanks Miriam, I have to hop up another call. Oh, okay, bye Sandra. Um, beside Google and um, Google AdWords and Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Pinterest. You can also advertise through Amazon and Hootsuite. Uh, the one for Hootsuite is called Adspresso. I'm um, not a fan of it at all. It's um, you pay $17 for a thousand impression. And the reason I'm not a fan of it is because I don't I'm not a fan of impressions. Don't want to pay for an impression. An impression to me means someone has seen it, but they've done nothing about it. Why do I want to pay for that? I want to pay for you to look at something, clicking on it, pick up the phone, call me, fill up a form. That's what I want to pay for. If I can't pay for that, then I don't want it. So when you buy ads, make sure um, that it's not based on impressions. Even click. I understand click. Click is important. You know, you can't always ask people to call. They may not be on their phone or they may be somebody that can't call you. So I get it. You want to do pay per click? That's fine but impressions doesn't make sense. Amazon has come up with um, a new advertising platform. Um, I like it because it's written with the, so Amazon has an incredible development team. Um, their ads are amazing when it comes to targeting. They can target a lot of people that are shopping off of Amazon. And that is a huge deal because that's six and a half million people a day that shop from Amazon. So it's an amazing platform. Um, if you do have a product that you want to sell on Amazon, Amazon advertising is a really good one to consider. Um, now, AI is growing tremendously. AI is the reason why we have chatbots. AI is the reason why um, you know Google knows who to advertise to. AI is the reason why ads follow you everywhere. So consider that AI is something that you do want to uh, incorporate it into your business. Um, it all depends on the type of business that you're in. However, again, make sure that um, you are open to AI. Artificial intelligence will be everywhere like electricity. And it's true. They are already everywhere. So this is again why I keep saying check your reports and make sure that you're, you are looking at your analytics. The reason you have analytics is because of the artificial intelligence. We can track so much information about our clients. We know where they are. We know what they're doing. We know how long they stay on our website. We know their search pattern. We know their shopping pattern. We know what they're looking for. So if you're in the real estate industry if, and you have a website, your analytics should be something you check every day because then that tells you who are your potential clients and how you're going to be able to remarket to them. So consider that. Um, Again, mobile, uh, there's three mil, there's an estimated of three, oh, sorry guys, there's an estimated of a three billion people will have access to mobile phone by 2020, which is like, 
this is why it's important your website to be accessible through your mobile. It's so important that um, when you create an ad or you create any sort of a, a graphics for your business, make sure that it's mobile friendly. Because when it's mobile friendly, then everybody can see it. 83% um, of Canadians, we use our mobiles for almost everything. So make sure that now is a really good time to, to kind of focus on how to recreate your brand and recreate your, you know, maybe um, mat advertising material and make them mobile friendly. Do you guys have any questions? I'm going to open the floor to questions. I'm just going to see how do I get into this. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let me open the floor to questions. Oh, here we go. I am unmuting everybody. Think that there will be Does anybody have any questions? Oh, wow, that was pretty good. Okay. Anyone? I have one. Yeah, go for it. It's Patty. Um, Hi, I'm Patty. Hi there. I'm wondering, um, the analytics seem to be objectively interpreted. For example, I'm with a company now. I'm looking for a new vendor. Um, at least I'm looking at the idea of a new vendor. So I'm getting a, an SEO report from my vendor and I'm, I'm looking at other reports from other vendors to see, okay, what do you, what do you think we're doing? And they're so different, like they're night and day different. So when I say to one, why is yours so different than this guy's? You know, oh, well, he's just uh, made the numbers look better to try and get your business. It, it's just, I'm getting all of these conflicting stories about, I mean, num okay. not, the numbers are the numbers. How can they be interpreted so very differently? They're, okay. The numbers that you see from your analytic, from your Google Analytics, I don't have access to that. I can't see right. your numbers. Right. So um no matter what what i see is based on so we use this tool called sem rush okay so yeah. we also use another tool called g matrix and we use alexa not the google not the not the amazon one but there's a program called alexa um and these three give us information about your website now we look at um your the site's speed and again we get that from google we look at um, what pages you have on your website and how well they're reacting. I can't see the actual number of people that are hitting your website, but I can see how Google is interpreting your pages. So our numbers should be all the same across all boards. <laughs> That's what I thought. And what I usually say is no matter who you're working with, just ask them, can you run the SEM, your report right in front of me and show me how, what are the steps that you took? Mm. Yeah, that's a good idea. I want to see what steps you took. And if it's just you plugging in my number into, you know, the software system, can you zoom me into the conversation and show it to me? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I just want to keep everybody honest. Um, the thing is, and it's not, okay, so... Um, Everybody uses a different tool. And this is not because they're not being honest. I don't know if they're fudging the numbers and I, mm -hmm. because I, I haven't seen your numbers, but um, here's what I'll do. I have a tool, message me, I'll run your numbers and I'll show it to you. Compare that to what they're giving you. Okay, sure, okay? yeah. And this is based on my SEM rush and I'll run it through Google as well. And I'll show you exactly how I run it. Okay. So if you want, um, I'll send you my contact. I'll put it in the chat. This is my email. Send me your yeah. email address. Yeah. And I'll show, we'll do a Zoom call and I'll show you how it's done. Then do a comparison with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and say, I, I, and we can record it and you can see it. Okay. And this is yeah. not like, again, this is not a, a, a dig at anybody. Everybody in this industry, we, we, we use different tools, like how you use a different tool when it comes to your business. Mm -hmm. so you just want to make sure that, and say to them, this is the recording I have. How did you do yours? Yeah. Okay. That's great advice. Thank you. 
more than welcome. I just posted my um, email address in the chat bot. Got it. Excellent. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. All right. So thank you all for attending. I'm always here to help you. Uh, feel free to message me. Um, and I will send everybody an email with all the content and I'll put in some of the stats from yesterday's uh, webinar that we did with what's happening as far as search uh, rankings are concerned with different industries. And you guys use it for your business. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you again. How do you feel about Yelp? Oh, Wendy, hold on. Uh, Wendy, how do you feel about Yelp? I absolutely love Yelp. Um, it's a great tool. I would not pay for it because there are free services like Google review out there, but it's a fantastic tool because it has millions and millions of people that send a lot of reviews on it. So uh, the paid version makes absolutely no difference than the free version, but it costs you about $400 a month. Um, <laughs> so keep the free version if you can and use it as much as you want. Um, you can't, nothing bad will happen. However, you need to have a more a strategy. This is so important. Keep that in mind, Wendy. You need to have a strategy when it comes to, um, if someone leaves you a bad review, how are you going to respond to them? Okay. You need to have a good strategy around that. And that strategy is, um, when someone leaves you a bad review, don't shy away from it. Respond very professionally and ask them if you can take the take it offline, provide your contact information so that they can connect with you offline. And honestly, it's so powerful when you see someone has taken the time to respond to every review, it means they care uh, and then it matters to them what's happening with their business. So respond professionally, take it offline and talk to them offline. And I think that's it. I hope that answered your question, Wendy. amazing guys if you have any question reach out to me you have my contact info i'll send out you send out the email to all of you and have yourself a beautiful day bye 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 thank you more than welcome <laughs>